argon, helium, carbon dioxide, straight oxygen? Which gas am I supposed to be MIG welding with? Today, we're gonna put your mind at ease and we're gonna give you the facts about the four most commonly used gases for MIG welding. When you should be using them, if you should be using them, and which one is right for you. So let's start things off with carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide, or CO2, is the most common of all of these gases that you're gonna see most people welding with in a shop. One great reason is it's the cheapest of all the gases. It's perfect for most MIG welding situations. It's literally just plug and play. You just hook up a tank, turn it on, you go start welding. You don't have to add any sort of inert gas to it. Now, in my opinion, there's very little downside to using just straight CO2, especially if, you're just, if you have a little small shop or you're just messing around a lot. It can be a little bit uh, messier. There's a lot more weld spatter to take into account and have to go back and clean up uh, if, if appearance is an issue for you. It's just not as a consistent process if you're doing a whole lot of welding uh, than if you had like a mixed gas. Now, Speaking of mixed gas, and this is what we use on almost all of our, our basic wel MIG welding projects here, and that is a mixture between CO2 and argon. Uh, you can get different mixtures, but we use a 7525 here. Uh, it gives you more control, more puddle control, a nice cleaner weld, burns a little bit hotter. Um, there's way less slag to take care of, whereas you don't really get that so much with CO2. Now when it comes to welding steel with argon, just a little bit goes a long way. That's why we love that 75-25 mix with the CO2. You don't need 100% argon, hardly ever. So here is when you need 100% argon. You're welding aluminum, you're welding magnesium, you're welding titanium. Basically any non-ferrous metal is when you're gonna use straight up argon. Now helium, not just used for blowing up your kids' balloons, is a lot like argon in that it's used in mostly non-ferrous metals. So aluminum, magnesium, titanium, but also stainless steel. Now when welding stainless, uh, helium is usually mixed with both argon and CO2. Now, of all the gases we covered today, I consider helium to be uh, sort of the exotic of the gases. And that's because it's, it's hotter, it's cleaner, it's brighter, it's more expensive, and you have to use a lot more of it. It requires a higher flow rate when using. So you're burning a lot more money a lot faster. Think of it as kind of like a, a muscle car, or a Ferrari, or a Lamborghini. And plus it's got a cooler name in my opinion, helium. It's just fun to say. Now when someone talks about welding with oxygen, it's somewhat of a misunderstanding because it's not like someone just hooked up a tank of oxygen, turned it on, and then went and started MIG welding. That ain't gonna work. Generally what they're talking about is welding with a torch, which is oxyacetylene welding. And that's an entirely different process that has nothing to do with MIG welding, and we're not gonna talk about it in this video today. But just know that when they're talking about oxy oxygen welding, they're talking about oxyacetylene, or using oxygen as a mixture with another gas. So for the purposes of this video, just know that you're not gonna be going and getting a tank of oxygen anytime soon and hooking it up to your MIG welder. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I'm Andy Fogarty from the At Home Welder, and this has been for kingmetals.com. If you have any other questions about gases or consumables or any other welding questions, Ask below, love it when we get to answer your questions from the community, it's, it's why we do these things. All right, that's it, see you guys next time.